Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey, and we appreciate you making us a part of your time. I want to remind you that if you enjoy this, you can get a whole lot more at changeministry.org. In fact, we have an entire section devoted to the study of Bible prophecy and the promises and the love in it. Make sure you check that out if you get an opportunity. But in the meantime, let's look at what we're going to be talking about in this five-part series, the concept of turning their hearts. Remember, we're rooted in the book of Deuteronomy, and one of the great truths in the book of Deuteronomy is God's uh, revealing to us our power to choose. And today we're going to be talking about how he understands that and he appreciates it. So let's pray. Father, I want to ask now for your grace to speak to our hearts, that we will hear your voice, see your face and even experience your love. Amen. You know, know it or not, we're all experiencing the love of God. The fact that you are watching in the land of the living, in your right mind, that's the grace of God to us. And when we look at God sometimes, when we see our Heavenly Father and how he looks towards us, we can oftentimes forget how he looks at our experience and how our reality does not scare him. He's well aware of it because he knows everything. And one of the things that we want to start with this series and understanding the, the concept of turning their hearts is that Jesus knows our faith is on a swivel of choice. God understands, and he in fact has installed the reality that our faith is on a swivel, much like a door is on a hinge, or even a spinning chair has the capacity to turn. We have been given, gifted by God, this ability to turn. Meaning that we can turn to him and we can turn from him. He's aware of that and he made it that way. Look here in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 25. He's speaking prophetically to the children of Israel, but notice his recognition of the swivel. When thou shalt beget children and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land and shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or the likeness of anything and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger. He's speaking prophetically of what Israel is going to do. But even though they're in that present, he is trying to present this truth conditionally as well, saying, well, if you do this, this is what is going to happen. But at the same time, he knows what is going to happen, but we don't. So he's making Israel aware that I know you can choose me. In fact, there will come a time in your blessing and in your prosperity that you will forget where it's come from or who it's come from. And you're going to swivel. You're going to pivot in another direction. So he knows this. This is him telling us that he knows our choice. But continue to read. When you look down in verse 29, it says, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse 29 says, But if from thence. In other words, from the mindset of verse 25, you can turn, if you will turn back to me, you'll put yourself in right relationship to me and my blessings and all my promises. See, understand that the fact that we have choice does not mean that the Lord approves of every choice that we make. But we need, again, looking at how God looks at us, to know that he knows we can choose. He knows that we can pivot. He knows that we can swivel. And that should really inform how we treat other people too. I mean, a real Christian is someone who respects other people's choices. That's why things like mandates or times like the dark ages are totally inconsistent with the character of God because he presents to us the option of whether or not good or evil, left or right, up or down. And then the consequences thereof are our choosing, but we still have the chance to choose. So it's good to know that we can Turn from God, if we choose, with all the negative aspects, because that means we can turn to God with all the positive and blessed aspects, because he wants a willing relationship. Final verse in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou wilt turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, there it is again. Turn, turn, turn. I am not telling anybody to turn from the Lord because you can't. In fact, it's the very opposite. Because your chair has a swivel, because your faith has a pivot, make sure you plant that into Christ because it's easy to lose its hold, easy to lose its footing and go in all kinds of directions. 
But our choice is what actually validates the very love of God and that there is no force, but there is faith. There is no chain, but there is a choice because that's the only atmosphere that real love can blossom in. You know, it's good to know that he didn't build robots. He made us and he gave us this capacity to turn to him so that when we do turn to him and when the whole host of heaven, and even when Satan and his demons see us doing what we do, they know that we're doing it, even though we could do everything and anything else. That's love. That's choice. That's Christ. And I want to pray today. We will recognize our freedom to turn, which means, as we're going to see in this study, we can always be turning to Christ.